Hey guys, does this look familiar? Well, it's actually not the Admiral 16R12 that I'm just about done restoring. It is, in fact, another one that I just got home with. Here's the one that I've been working on. And as I look more closely, even with the bad lighting out here, I believe this is black big light. And this is brown, which means this is probably a 16R11 and that's a 16R12 or vice versa. It's just like there's an Admiral 19A11 and an Admiral 19A12. 11 being the brown and 12 being the black. Or my 20X11 and 20X12. Well, <laughs> the reason I've got this is not so much that I went out to buy this set. I went out to buy this set, which is the baby brother to the Zenith porthole that I got over the summer. As near as I can tell, the cabinet's exactly the same, except that it's about 30% smaller. It's in pretty decent condition, too. Some chucks and scratches here and there in the finish, but there aren't any chunks of an ear gone or anything. So actually, I think this cabinet's in better shape than my other one. And inside, what have we got? It's the 12-inch version. This is from, I believe, 1950. It's called the Grey Mare, whereas my other set is 16-inch set, and it's called the Monroe. They had nicknames for all the porthole sets. They were typically either president's names or names of famous mountains. Like I think there's a McKinley. Or I guess it was a President McKinley too, I think. <laughs> Please correct me if I'm wrong on that. These are also both a really good deal. They were on eBay, local pickup only, and they were in Wisconsin, just across the Illinois border, kind of out in the boonies. Uh, he actually had three sets, all listed with a starting bid of $9.99. Um, somebody else did bid on this, but they didn't uh, go very high, so I ended up getting it for, I think, 25 bucks. And nobody else bid on this, so I got this for $9.99. And because local pickup, there's no shipping or anything, so uh, yeah, about 35 bucks. I got these two sets. The third set was a Philco. Kind of interesting because I hadn't seen one like it before, but it was way too big. It was a 16-inch console set, something like this. Or maybe more like my Motorola 12K2 where it had that dental molding, the zigzag, and it was also missing chunks of it. Is a huge cabinet, like probably uh, uh, eight inches wider than this and about ten inches deeper. And the picture tube was busted, the neck was broken off of it. So, not only wouldn't have fit in my car, but uh, no, I wouldn't know what to do with it, anyways. Not that I know what to do with these two sets. <laughs> um, but I know portholes are desirable, it was close by, it was cheap. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I definitely am not going to keep both porthole sets once they're restored. I'm more inclined to keep this one and sell the other. Although the 16-inch set is more impressive looking. So we'll see. But I do plan on restoring this one first because it looks easier. The chassis was out when I picked it up. And, uh, it's simpler than the other set. The other set, if you recall, has a split chassis. There's a power supply and amp down here, umbilical cord and the upper chassis. This one's self-contained. Also, it does not have one of those metal CRTs. It's an all-glass CRT, so it doesn't have that lethal shock potential. It's just a all-glass. And the seller claimed that he had it partially working. I saw a little bit of work uh, has been done below. Some new wiring in here. I think this is for the speaker. But time will tell. Oh, and the flyback looks to be intact. The flyback on my other porthole set, that looks like it completely melted down. Huh. And that's just what I was curious about. I don't I don't have a lot of experience with porthole sets, but I have handled one or two other chassis that were 12-inch, and they were metal. 
they use the 12 UP for a CRT, which is 12 inches, but it's a metal cone. But however, it does say right here, or 12 LP 4A, which is the all glass version, and that is indeed what's in here. See right there, clear as day, 12 LP 4A. With a rather wacky looking ion trap magnet. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a new one on me. It looks like it's two rings of metal with well, it's, it's brass with a br big brass clip on it. That's crazy. Yeah, leave it up to Zenith to do something unlike anybody else. I'll pull this chassis out in a moment, take a closer look, and of course test the picture tube. Now, as for the Admiral, if for no other reason I wanted to get this set because it's got the original metal back, I do not have it for that set any the back for any zenith bakelite set are hard to come by especially the metal ones and this one looks to be in really really good condition copper plated steel with uh i think that might be aluminum in the middle there that'll go on like so i've not pulled the chassis out on this do not know what the condition is however i can immediately see there's a brightener on the picture tube always a bad sign that means the picture tube was getting weak so they attach this what this does is it transforms the normal 6.3 volt AC on the filament to around 8 volts AC so it runs it harder I sometimes do that when I first test the CRT that's been sitting around for decades to kind of wake it up but I don't like to leave them running like that for extended periods of time because it will accelerate the deterioration of it but when you got a picture tube at the end of its life and you got nothing else to lose, you go for it. So now that I've seen that, well, I may or may not even attempt to restore this. I may just use it for spare parts. We'll see what the rest of the condition is. I'm also missing a speaker. I just noticed it should be mounted on the side here. I don't see it floating around. The seller, um, like, got this. Uh, it was being thrown out. Uh, he goes to a lot of ham fest. I don't know if it was in the junk pile, the donation pile, or if they found it in the garbage somewhere. Um, you also see there's a hole that somebody drilled in the side. You just notice that. Don't see one on the other side. Definitely shouldn't be there. And there's a chunk broken out down here. I think there's some more chips along the bottom. And the screw holes where the back mounts on are pretty chewed up. So, this one's broken. So not in the greatest condition, but we'll see. This is probably a 16KP4 or 16RP4 pitcher tube. Pretty difficult to find. If it's a 17BP4, also kind of hard to find, but not quite as hard to find. Something else nice on this side is it actually has the original door down here. It's got a crack, but the, uh, they're generally missing, probably 75% of the time they're missing, and another 20% of the time they're cracked, and maybe only 5% of the time do you actually get one that's completely intact. It won't stay closed, but that's not a big deal. And all the knobs are missing, however I think I do have a spare set. Scuffed up here there. Oh, I'm also missing some of the knobs on the Zenith set. Should have a couple more of these guys for here. I don't think that they are that hard to find. We'll see. <laughs> Crazy channel number just like the other set goes two, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, three, six, eight, and so on. First I'm going to take a closer look at the Admiral set. I just pulled the chassis out of the cabinet, tipped the cabinet on its side. 
and uh, it's actually in better condition than I was thinking. I guess it was the other side that's got a chip on it. Yeah, down there. But otherwise, it doesn't look too bad. No label inside, just like the other one. That's why I'm not sure what the exact model numbers are, because they're just not printed anymore. Here is the chassis. Clearly labeled on the back as a 21B1 run 5, so this is older than the one that I'm currently working on. Otherwise, though, it looks awfully familiar. <laughs> a Philco picture too. And this one has the original ion trap magnet. That's the other reason I wanted it. You can see it looks a bit different than the ones I've been playing around with um, on the, uh, the other set. I found the number on the picture tube and it sure looks like it says 17YP4. I have never heard of a 17YP4 before. I'll have to look that up. But it's not the difficult to find 16RP4 or 16KP4. This is actually a 17 inch tube. So uh, I think these are a little bit easier to find. We'll see. Right now, I'm going to tip this on its side. Let's see what we've got underneath. Well, right away, I can see a number of interesting things. It looks a bit different from the one I've been working on, and it's got quite a few repairs. For example, on the other set, it also has this big canned ohm resistor here. But the one in that set is still good. This one must have been bad. Somebody clipped it out and cobbled together this piece of crap that's just hanging here. Ditto down here. These are actually old dog bone resistors. Oh, nice soldering job there. <laughs> Glad I did not try plugging this set in, although I think the seller said he did. Yikes. A lot of old wax caps still in here. And this one has the IF shield. It's actually missing in some of my other chassis. I don't know if it's critical to their operation or not, though, because I, I talked to several guys online that also have this Admiral 21B1 chassis, and their sets are also missing the IF shield. But theirs seem to work all right, as does the one I've been working on, so I don't know how critical it really is. But it certainly doesn't hurt to have it whether it needs it or not. Otherwise, well, there's only so much you can tell visually, but I don't see anything that's blown up. These transformers, of course, could still be bad, but, you know, they're not obviously, like, fried up or blackened or anything. Same old tuner like I've been working on and other sets. Well, I suppose it's restorable. I guess the key thing would be that picture too. Next, let's take a look at the Zenith chassis in more detail, and then I'll pull out my Sencor CR70 and test both these picture tubes. Okay, here's the porthole chassis. Zenith did make hot chassis porthole sets with series wound tube filaments, but this is power transformer. Always a nice touch. Don't have to worry about using an isolation transformer while working on it. These sets were kind of odd in that, like some Motorola's, the flyback is actually underneath the chassis. 
high voltage rectifier sticking out on top. There's no protective cage around it at all. This is a horizontal output tube. It's bigger than I was expecting. It's probably a 6BG6. Oh, 19BG6. Huh, and the key's broken off the base. Well now. It's just possible that this is a series wired set and this transformer is just for the B plus and the tube filaments are wired in series should be weird but well yeah it'd be weird <laughs> I do have a Motorola set that has a small power transformer it's about half this size and it's for the tube filaments and for the B plus they have a selenium voltage doubler off the AC line I've never seen a set that has series wired filaments and use a transformer for the B+. Plus this transformer is just too darn big. I don't know, maybe somebody stuck the wrong tube type in there. Let's see what else we got. Well, on the other hand, this is a 25AX4. Typically in sets that use a filament transformer, all the tubes start with 6 because they're all 6.3 filament tubes. And so far we got a 19 tube, a 25, tube, a 6 tube, and 6 SN7, and 12 SN7, that's a 6 AG7. Well, I'm just going to have to find the chassis number on this and dig up a schematic because I just not, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. 25Z6? Hmm. Alright, well, <laughs> if this is a hot chassis of some sort, what the heck does it have this big power transformer for? Hmm. Alright, on to the rest of it. I think this is the original picture too because this font looks like the kind of font that Zenith used. Looks like somebody put some electrical tape around here. Right, the base was loose. I'll take that off and explore it at some point and glue it down if necessary. There's a tuner. 6AG5, 6C4. Hopefully another 6AG5. Oh, 6 BJ6, I think. Get in there. It's the IF strip. Looks like it has four stages. Oh, rather, sorry, rather three stages. <laughs> now there's some creative engineering. I guess I had to cram one more tube down in there. But the pitcher tube is there. So they actually put a socket, <laughs> or rather they cut uh, a section of the chassis out and bent it at like a 30 degree angle. So the tube is mounted on an angle. That's funny. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look underneath. Well, there's a pretty good sign of a filament wired set. It's got a big power resistor. They would use those to bleed off any excess power because the tube filaments didn't add up to exactly 120 volts AC. Lots of bumblebee caps. Also known as black beauties. Colors are nice and bright on them though, so fairly easy to read. For example, this is brown, black, yellow. You read these in a similar manner as resistors, and the value is at picofarad. Brown is one, black is zero, so you have one, zero. Yellow is a multiplier, and yellow means four, so four, zero. So it's one, zero, plus four zeros, 
or 100,000 picofarads, also known as 0.1 microfarad. Similarly, here we have yellow, violet, orange, four seven three zeros, 47,000 picofarads, or 0 0.047 microfarad. One new capacitor here. All the rest looks original. Crappy sand resistors disintegrating as always. And here is the flyback. The one in my other set looks all crazy fried and it's covered in some black goo. This one doesn't look too fried and it's covered in white goo. <laughs> really impossible to tell if it's any good or not just from looking at this. But <laughs> it physically it is it uh it does have a better appearance than the other two. I have to test that out to find out for sure. Alright, I'm going to look for a chassis number and look for a schematic and pull out my Syncor picture tube tester. I found the model number on the back of the set. Here it says model G234, and it's kind of faint. But there's another sticker down below G2346R. And I pulled out my Zenith Wallace Telaid coming 47 to 53. And in it. We've got 2346R Graymare, page 30 to 35. Several schematics, not sure why. Yeah, 19 BG6, 25W4. Alright, so, <laughs> wacky as it is, this does have series strung tube filaments right off the AC line. But the power transformer is for the B+, plus, like 380 volt and 150 volt. So, 5U4 to give us the what you might call B++, the higher voltage rail, 380 volts. 25Z6 for the lower voltage rail, about 150 volts. Some sets do this with a massive bleeder power resistor, some do it with separate transformer windings and two rectifier tubes. I also noticed that on the back of this set, there's a right up there, very clearly warning, the chassis top of this receiver is connected to one side of the power line. So it is a hot chassis. Polarized though. One of the AC pins is larger than the other. So if I get, hook up the plug right, uh, at least the top side will be connected to the neutral line and not hot. Also a connector here for something called a phone vision unit. I'm not entirely sure what that is. I've heard of them, but I'm not positive. So I'll have to look that up. Some sets also had a connector back here somewhere for a Lazy Bones remote control. But I don't think this does. I think it would be somewhere around here. All I see are the antenna terminals. So let's see, which do I have? So this should be 23G22. Okay, so it is the schematic. The RF amp, converter, which is the mixer, oscillator, does have four IF stages, all with six AU6s, 12 AT7 for AGC amp, inner carrier sound amp. Okay, so it's inner carrier sound. Unlike the Admirals I've been working on, where they split off here and have a separate IF ah, yeah, for the audio. This does both the audio and video, and picks the audio off here. 
and we'll let you set a video amp. Well, we have a 12 LP4, but here they have a 12 UP4. That's the metal tube I mentioned earlier. Plus seven. Oh, there's the uh, that 6AG7 is the audio output tube. It's a metal tube up front there. So it's a little different, but not totally uh, unfamiliar to me. Maybe it's the power supply that's uh, it's a little different. Hmm, should be fun to work on. Well, let's see if those pictures are doing good. First, I'm testing the 12 LP4A in the Zenith porthole chassis. And uh, so far it stinks. It had zero emission at first. I cranked the filament voltage up to about seven and a half volts and I've had this running for, well, it's hard to say. Cause I would leave this on and come back out here periodically and the filament light would go out. I think there are some loose connections in this base. I can tell it's loose, and I'm sure it's why somebody wrapped electrical tape around it. So I think as the picture tube warms up, some connections inside are, inside the base are failing. But I can say for certain it's been running about five minutes right now because I've been watching it. And we're still deep into the bad range. But it's not completely dead, so still some hope left. Before I mess around with this too much longer though, I think I'll uh, move on to testing this one because really I want to get this tape off and repair this base. Oh, and I did do a little research on this Admiral cabinet. I found uh, it in Writers Volume 8 where they listed the cabinet in the parts list and the model with the black cabinet which is this guy the one that i've been restoring is the 16 r11 so i went back and i changed the video titles um to reflect that and the one i just picked up with the brown cabinet is the 16 r12 strange that in both these sets there is no model number listed anywhere on the back or the inside of the cabinet but luckily with that detailed service info i was able to figure it out Oh, I also did some research on this picture tube, this 17YP4. That was made by Sylvania, which did source parts to Filco, and this is a Filco picture tube. I'm almost positive it was not original to this set, though. What's kind of interesting about it, though, is that it has what they call a cylindrical face, whereas most picture tubes are spherical, like this guy. What that means is it curves both up and down and left and right. In other words, this whole thing is a is a, uh, a spherical surface. Like imagine this is part of like a giant ball that was cut out. This is cylindrical, meaning it's perfectly straight up and down, and it only curves from side to side. So I don't know if you can tell that, but if I if you look straight down, it's perfectly flat. So this was kind of the precursor to the perfectly flat CRTs picture tubes that came out, oh, I think starting in the late 90s, maybe. At any rate, it seems that the connections are the same as all picture tubes of this style, same pinout. So, because uh, it is not listed in here. Uh, it did seem to be um, Listed along with the 17 QP4 though, so let's see if that's in here. In other words, in the Sylvania tube manual, it was 17 QP4 slash 17 YP4. All right, there's the 17 QP4, so I'll use these settings. Okay, I hooked up the 17 YP4, film it lit right up. But, as soon as I checked for HK shorts, bam. 
one shorts is okay though. There's only not much point in checking cut off on the missions when we've got a short. So I really hope I can clear out that short, I flip through and remind myself exactly how to do that. I know there's a remove G1 short function. I'm not so sure I'm going to be able to clean that out. Which, now that I think about it, might explain this. Because these can serve a couple functions. Not just to boost the filament voltage, but that transformer in here, at least in some of these models, will provide isolation from the other tubes in the set. So if there's a heater to cathode short in here, this will provide isolation and you can, can continue to use the pitcher tube. So this doesn't necessarily mean it has bad emissions. Might have just been a solution to that short. Well, I found the section of the manual that discusses HK shorts, and unfortunately, these can't be removed. So, I think that's it for testing this picture tube. Uh, as I said, doesn't mean it can't be used. You just need to use an isolation transformer on the heater. So I'll put this set on the back burner for now. And uh, move back to my other projects. I hope you guys enjoyed this look at my latest finds. A Zenith 12-inch porthole and yet another Admiral 16-inch Bakelite tabletop.